My mind is on a mission. Stay rich in mind. My mind is on a mission every day and every hour. Not influenced by the money. I don't need to smell the flowers. I stay rich in mind. It's more than a slogan. It's the life I live, and I'm just trying to be open. My mind. This is the follow up to a creator's light. You're going to listen now to part two. And of course, we have the great phenomenal Jada Justice here. And she's going to bless uh, the airwaves. And hopefully this will be something that you can take with you um, everywhere you go. And I just want to say again, thank you so much, Jada, for being on here. And we're going to get right to the right to the point. So you have something that you want to share with the listeners. And can you detail what they're about to listen to? <clears throat> yes. So my uh, all these poems that I have is part of my summer series that I released on my IG handle. And they are original poems that I have not performed except for one of them. Um, my last poem is one that I recently written just for the show. Okay, great. Well, with that being said, I know everybody's geared up and ready to listen, so you can go ahead with your first one. Okay. Um, this poem is called Bless the Beautiful Black Man. Bless the beautiful black man in this lifetime. Life is still just as challenging as it is back in the day. You must exhibit strength at all times and have faith or be led astray by forces sent to destroy you, distract you, or even tame your greatness. You're seen as a threat even as an innocent little boy, just to grow up and be measured by your past mistakes, bank, money in a bank, or your manhood. My heart yearns for you. Growing up must have been tough. Feeling no one loves you for you, but that thinking has become extinct and enough. Your mother loves you because you were conceived in love. Your woman loves you because her words can speak life and shun away that doubt of worthlessness. She will come up against anyone who speaks malice on her king, protecting what's hers like a queen chess piece. Don't sleep on her. She can move like anyone, but her place is right beside you. Never forget she is a mirror of your birth too. Your children are proof that someone is willing to sacrifice their life to honor you. They adore you. They respect you. They are your gift from God. It was time for you to have something in physical form that's yours. You don't have to have all the answers. Even ones in your childhood you still question with your legacy emerges a new truth. That you are a creator in your own right. Despite anything formed against you, beautiful black man, God is ever present in you. He has faith in you, naturally a leader, a warrior in your own story, an amazing writer illustrated with your own paintbrush. You take this crown and lead in love because that's what you are, my son, protected in love. Wow, that's definitely uh, an amazing poem. And you really go in depth. And that's something I always notice about you. And what uh, I, I mean, I, I hear what the topic is. And was it something specific that you you seen or you heard? And you he was like, I need to write something like this. What like really encouraged that? Um, there was a video that was going viral on IG at the time. And it was saying that a man is loved for just his money and things he can provide for a family. And I felt like that was a horrible way to look at life. Like, you know, uh, who wants to be loved because of something that they can provide for their wife or their children, you know? Like, I feel like black men in society don't get enough recognition or respect. And um, I come from a strong black man. So to me, I took it personally. Like, oh, I wonder if my dad feels like that. Like, if he does, I need to let him know and let any brother know around me that um, you don't have to do that for me, but I feel like I'm not the only woman on this planet that feels like that. 
you know, there's no way. Yeah, I believe you're right. And I, and I think it's going to be many more who are going to come forth and after hearing from what you got to say, are going to probably add on to it. So I'm glad that you came up with that and, and you really gave us something that we can kind of, we definitely going to cherish moving forward. And so what is your next poem that you're going to be reading? This one is called Pondering Thought. Um, it is my view on being a black woman and, you know, this society and the pressures that they put on us sometimes. And being a woman, you have to figure out everything while taking care of everything and everyone. <laughs> you know, it's almost like we neglect that. Not perfectly, but it's just one of those things like I want to be a perfect mother, perfect wife, perfect employee, perfect sister, perfect daughter. Like, it's a lot. Okay, well, hey, we're, we're ready to hear about it. Okay. She's so prolific, politicking, trying to come up with uh, solutions to many problems. Mind racing a mile a minute, pondering the outcome. When you made a life decision, now here you are at the fork in the road. Can't turn around, but as you look ahead, you found you still got a long ways to go. Continuing to grow, growth is so challenging. Healing is so necessarily essential to move through in life. When COVID hit, we all took a loss, but the ones that didn't got realigned to what's more important, goals, friends, and family. Everything has changed. Some things are complicated, but in the midst of chaos, clarity has ensued. And still there's more adjustments we've yet to see. But never mind the world, I finally see when I look in the mirror, the change I've been craving is mentally evolving in me. Man. I see, you know, with, with your writing, you just really talk from so many different points of uh, view or, or I feel like things that you might have heard in, in conversations and you really just put it out there in your own unique way. So. I mean, again, it's you have some really powerful words, and I know you're going to keep moving forward with that. And with that being said, what is your next poem you're going to be blessing us with? So um, this one is called Before a Love. Um, I'm just going to kind of let you or the listener take it and come up with their own rendition of what the poem may be about. But when I wrote it, it was talking about how love can feel good, but it may not be a healthy love. Yeah. Well, hey, I think that's something a lot of couples are you know dealing with and a lot of relationships are teetering on whether something is healthy or they should just stick it stick it out because they feel like they don't want to be judged if they just give up so i i think what we're about to hear is probably going to help you know really connect the dots on a lot of everything so go ahead and let us hear it ever prayed for someone more than yourself trying to be selfless I keep you in my thoughts. Even when I'm falling apart, everybody trying to tear us apart. World on our shoulders. I was there to lighten the load. You used to say I was your good luck charm, but oh, how you forgot how lucky you truly were. You got a beautiful woman, a lover and a friend, hustler, goal setter and freak. But soon you started to resent me. Like those feelings that I used to bring waves of dopamine. Now that reward has quickly turned into loathing the sight of me. Nick picking what I wear, but you used to think I was a model in everything. Getting uncomfortable when people glance at me in admiration, because later when we come home, it's an argument. Now it's do I know him and what was he looking at? I want to make love, but instead you yelling, telling me, 
all your insecurities like oh you want another dude at the at your job meanwhile bob is just a co-worker happily married who bought me coffee that's when i knew you really didn't love me for me but what you seen I was a shiny accessory like your grills, chain, or your rings you hold so dear. That moment I didn't agree with anything, I was the enemy instantly. Now you trying to stop me from being around people I hold dear, my friends and family relentlessly trying to alienate me from bonds I formed way before I knew you, but I never did that to you. Like, what do you really want from me? I'm only perfect when I'm quiet or you're showing me off. You live for the moments that unk at the cookout saying, I see you, nephew. Other than that, I'm just a source of the self-love you lacked. Attracted to what I am, but mad because you have to pretend to be something that you're not to keep me. Truth is, I was way out of your league and you knew it. But if you could break me down, put me on your level, rule me, conquer me, control me, you'll be more superior. Alpha male beating on your chest to the world, but inside you're all fraud. Let down your guard, pull back some layers and expose your true self. The boy in you that's not healed, but jumping from woman to woman to make you whole, that's not anyone's job but yours. You thought you loved me, I did too, but you don't. You thought I was the one, but I'm not. I stay 10 toes uh, before anything goes and you fighting me like I'm a man in the street. You just wanted me and needed me to feel good about yourself. Love feels good when it's with me, don't it? But when I leave and you're empty, what do you have? That burden's too much for any woman to bear. Take a look in the mirror. Real love for anyone starts there. I will definitely say being able to be vulnerable, looking in the mirror and trying to figure out what's healthy for you is very encouraging to hear someone like yourself really detail it and say, you know what, I have to start making sure if I'm not feeling comfortable, if, if I'm not receiving the love and, and dedication I'm supposed to be receiving, then it's just not for me. And you got to make the best uh move and decision for yourself and i and i and I, it's great that you were able to really get your point across in that way so again thank you so much for that oh thank you and i definitely feel the same exact way you know so many women we think the more and more we give a relationship it's going to um be a revolving door but sometimes you can give love to someone and they're just blind to it because of whatever they experienced prior to you, or maybe in their head, you're just not the one. And you know, my advice is don't let a man tell you twice what he already told you the first time. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we need more women like yourself, whether they're doing it in a poem style or just speaking their truth, being able to come forth and, and saying how they feel because everybody doesn't feel the same and some are afraid to really speak their mind because they don't maybe want um any vitriol or somebody telling them you just got to stick it out so i think with people like yourself it's going to be more women that's going to be comfortable and not stand for men that are trying to take advantage of them so what is the next poem we're going to be uh listening to um this is a live poem it's called family values. And I wrote this after I called off my engagement and it was supposed to be a poem filled with hope. And maybe if I ever do move on and heal myself, you know, I can leave room for uh, new growth and new lessons that I learned and I bring it into the new family that I create with the next man I call myself being with who I hope to be my husband. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, everyone, let's get ready to uh, listen to Family Values. Can I talk to y'all about Black love? Okay. So I wrote this. This is called Family Values. <clears throat> we 
When I think of the perfect family, I envision it with a black man. At the head of my table, praying over dinner, he provided to the legacy he helped create with me. I think of all the frogs I kissed that led me to my prince. How he's everything I dreamed of and then some. How handsome he is from his inner being to his strength that radiates all around him. I respect him in high regard like I do my father. The son-in-law my parents can be proud of. Our children are wise like me, speak their mind, but also obedient. Their father and I speak life of future kings and queens, true royalty, loyalty. No one can ever tell them what it means. So we're just finishing listening to family values. You know, that was a nice treat that Jada was able to uh, share with us. And I'm glad that you all were able to see her in her her element so thank you know i appreciate that jada yes thank you all right most definitely so now what is the next poem we're going to be listening to this next poem is called ego uh it's the acronym for everyone got obsessed <clears throat> Everyone got obsessed with jewels. We rather floss out our wrists, wearing swinging chains, blinking rings, anything to distract us from the truth. Everyone got obsessed with being right. So if I'm never wrong and you're never at fault, how are we going to brainstorm and get down to the bulk of our true problems? Instead of shifting the blame, let's start having real conversations on being a part of the solution and continuing the same cycle of stagnation and pain. No more eye for an eye games. It leaves us both blind. We tolerate the dark in our relationships because we are afraid to shine together. Someone has to be over the other, no equals, just a bunch of slaves and its masters. Everyone got obsessed with sex. It sells. I get it. Anything to get up in it. A man comes from the cat and will spend a lifetime trying to hit it. Make you come, girl. Don't you run because they could keep up. Now you got to get up in the a.m. Pick them panties off the floor. Do the walk of shame as you open his front door. Thoughts of embarrassment floods for a few seconds because he doesn't have respect for no one that's not his mama or bears his last name. But ironically, we be quick to bear his children. Meanwhile, he's barely there. As for the men, it was just a slip up, a mistake. My baby mama's is a nuisance. She's bitter and fake. She had some good good. But you never loved that woman anyway, right? Ego. Everyone got obsessed with being in control. We try to control everything that's meant to be an experience in life. Our significant others, our kids, our own success, our own lives. Meanwhile, we don't even own our own lives. It was a gift by design. Instead of digging deep on why or who I am, we shift our focus to things that we can't aid us in our path. Like if I change this attribute in them, it will somehow make me better. When fact is, you need that water you supply to everyone else in your own garden. Planting seeds and people as they grow past you or be plain ungrateful. When truth is, the ego in you doesn't know you're really neglecting yourself, killing yourself, trying to control things you have no control of. Only thing you have control of is self. Saying no. Creating boundaries. Anger accountability, knowing when to apologize. I pray death over the ego so we can all reach our full potential and really embrace growth. We aren't here forever. Let's transcend into peace. Leave behind knowledge that can help the future children understand us. Pull the veil and cloak them in love and protection. Keep focus, killing curses from generations before us. Yeah, the ego, it affects so many different things uh, we see in the news, relationships, just as you detail. And when we pull away from that, and like you mentioned in, in a previous uh, poem, and allow ourselves to 
be humble and, and, and vulnerable enough to take constructive criticism and look really into the mirror and say, you know what, my life or what's going on around me isn't conducive to where I want to be at. So what can I do? And you got to check that ego at the door. You know what I mean? So that's a, that's a, another great one. What do you have next in store for us? Uh, the next one I have in store for us, it is called <clears throat> Only God Can Rescue Me. So when I wrote this poem, um, I was thinking about me being a mom to a son that has autism, being a single mom. And, you know, this one is a personal out the vault for me. Like, um, I just want people to understand me. So as a writer and as a person, and this is a poem that is very personal. So I hope you guys enjoy it. <clears throat> Only God can rescue me. I feel like I'm in prison, stuck in a box with all three of my children. Mine going crazy while my son's nine years old, but still has the thinking capacity of a baby. I stay up at night praying to God, please protect my babies. My chocolate princess, who's in the midst of all these white kids struggling with her identity, to my autistic son, who's still not communicating. I have a lot of worries. I know. I can't fix everything. But if I could just fix this one thing first, everything might align. Waiting on people to do their jobs is equivalent to wasting time. Making progress, but nothing tangible to show for all this effort. Sandra keeps telling me to wither the storm, but the more I try to na navigate, I notice pieces of me are withering away. And I haven't figured out if this is a good thing. However, I'm almost down to my core and the struggle of all this chaos. I can't even remember who I am anymore. Like what decision led me here? How did I... How did my basic necessities become my everyday fear of losing? Only thing that brings me peace is that I feel God's presence all around me. I'm hopeful for better days. Underdog story, everybody loves them. Though nobody could imagine going through it. Some days you don't even know if you're going to pull through. Nonetheless, you walk through the fire, scorching earth under your feet, hoping on the other side is new growth sunlight, milk, honey, and abundant opportunity. When I make it to the other side of this test, I'll be the first one to tell everyone my story. Hands raised high, giving my heavenly father all the glory. Yeah, that definitely needed a moment of silence for that one because to be that open about what you are going through and those thoughts that you have as a mother, as a mother um, of, you know, black children and, and the things that they go through or are subjugated to. It takes a lot to really write it out and then actually say it for so many different ears to listen. And I mean, you really are a brave individual and a writer that isn't afraid to really speak from the heart. And that's what the world needs, someone that isn't going to hold back, that the tears fall over they may, but knowing that your success is going to come from being free and free of mind. And you really, really, really did it on that one. Thank you so much. You're I appreciate welcome. that. You're welcome. So now after, you know, that one that, you know, you really just, took us home with do you have anything else left yes i actually wrote um a special poem just for the show um this poem is to give you an idea and the listeners an idea of um how i see poetry and um you know, it's it's more than just words for me. It's more than just trying to gain accolades from this. Like this is really my first love. It um poetry means a lot to me. And um no amount of words from 
English vocabulary can even describe that, but I've found a way to accurately do it as much as I can. <laughs> so this one is called, um, it's more than a pen and paper. <clears throat> I use metaphors to implore you to listen. Too many times I've said it out loud, but no one was really listening. I'd rather share my feelings with strangers in a crowd that I can relate to but don't know intimately. Snap, clap, or just disregard what I'm saying. Either way, I stole your attention, if only for a minute, to criticize or get inspired to create like I do. I write because it makes days I feel like I'm dying inside colorful. Painting pictures in my mind with my pen, using words to fill it in, my empty canvas needs no erasers. I like my art, how I like my liquor, straight shot of Henny or Patron, no chasers. I'm on point like a ballerina executing a jeté, s'il vous plaît, pardon my friends if it's hard for you to comprehend what I'm trying to say. I write because though I'm caged by society and its desires that is designed to break me, I fight back with my lyrics line for line in a poem. I release myself from mental baggage more and more. Poetry was my first love that saved me. When my heart is heavy, it frees me. When my stomach was empty, it fed me. Now I'm sharing my plate of knowledge with all of you. Wisdom from Jada. I wish you find the justice inside of you. You you have a gift and it's shining. And I mean, like you said, the dictionary has many words in it, but the feeling that you evoke when you speak, um, I don't know what words can really um, encompass all of that, but I just really appreciate the time you took to read all your poems, everything that came from the heart, everything that you felt inspired by, motivated by from just seeing the world around us or even in your own home. And that's truly what helps people get through their day, being able to release those things and those feelings they have inside, because the more you have it bottled up, it does nothing for you. And it could turn into, you know, uh, ego where you feel like, okay, well, nobody can tell me nothing because of what I went through and stuff like that. But you are someone that you can give out your piece of knowledge, but also receive it as well. And I like to say again, thank you so much for being on a creator's light. This platform was definitely designated for people such as yourself. And is there anything else you want to um, leave the listeners with before we close out? Yes. Um, what I would like to leave the listeners with is um, you got to stop ignoring that voice inside you that's saying like, this is what I really want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. Why am I here? You have to stop doing that because if you're doing that, you're ignoring your God given gift. And the more and more you ignore your God-given gift, you're going to feel like you're not on your right path. So God didn't choose wrong. He chose you for a reason and you have a purpose and he will fulfill it either way. So stop fighting yourself. Stop fighting your doubts. Stop fighting your fear and just go for it. And that's it. And thank you so much for taking the time to listen and give me your ears. Yeah, you did that. Signed, sealed, and delivered by Jada Justice. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> everyone that's listening, I thank you again for the support. We will have more guests featured on here. If you know anybody you feel like they should be featured or they need some light shed on them, just feel free to message, message me. Um, either through my social media, if you have my number personally, you can feel free to reach out. And I say, we just want to say uh, thank you again, Jada. And as always, everyone remember to stay rich in mind so you don't make poor decisions. Until next time, everyone be blessed. Peace.